Wow, finally doing a standard style video. Haven't done one of these in a while. Over the past few years, technology has made tremendous strides, including the development of software that can create a wide range of content such as photos, videos, scripts, and even software itself. Yes, software that makes software. These type of creation tools are easily accessible and mostly free to anyone with an internet connection. But this advancement has also brought on some challenges, particularly in regards to crediting and attributing others' work, leading to issues such as copyright infringement and lack of credit for creators. MKBHD has recently addressed this topic in a video, and I agree that it's worth delving deeper into the issue. The other thing, though, is credit. And this is something that you may have seen pop up a little bit on social media lately, which is that AI steals art without consent. It's highlighting a long-standing problem in society that we will soon need to address and overcome. Let's start from the beginning. What does it mean to credit work and what is the role of copyright law in protecting creators' rights? So according to the AI itself, to credit work means to give credit or recognition to the original creator or source of a piece of work. This can include acknowledging the creator in written or spoken communication, or by citing the source of the work in a reference list or bibliography. Giving credit is an important part of academic and professional integrity, as it helps to ensure that the original creator of the work receives the recognition they deserve and helps to avoid plagiarism. In simple terms, we credit work because avoid stealing others' work, give recognition. But this explanation doesn't fully address the question of why it's important to credit work. Yes, it's nice to recognize the person that made it, but it actually has much bigger implication in our society. Why do we care if someone uses our work and claims it as their own, or uses it to create something new? Why do we care if they don't acknowledge that it was inspired by or copied from someone else's work? Are we self-centered? Well, maybe some of us are, but that's not the main issue. We live in a world where the work we invest in and the resulting output has monetary value, which we can exchange for the output of others' work. For example, I might make paintings and you might grow tomatoes. I can exchange my paintings for your tomatoes. Mining works on the same principle, but it's just an extra step in the process. However, if I create a painting and someone steals it and claims that they've created it, I lose value and they gain value, which they can use to exchange for goods and services, namely your tomatoes. This means that before the creation of digital media, assigning value to objects was relatively straightforward. However, digital media poses a unique challenge because it can easily be cloned without depriving the original creator of their work. If I copy a digital painting that you created, I haven't actually taken anything away from you, but my copy is identical to the original. Since this cloning process comes at almost no cost, why would someone exchange something of value, like tomatoes for it? The infinite reproducibility of digital media means that it's not scarce, so its value becomes zero, right? Actually, what it means is that the way we traditionally assign value to objects breaks down in the digital realm. Because according to its logic, digital artwork is worthless because it can easily be cloned. But in reality, it's not worthless. Because art is not bought for its physical properties, usually. It's bought for the ideas, the emotions, and the entertainment value that it generates. Someone didn't invest time and effort in creating art to just put paint on the canvas. They invested that time and effort to communicate an idea, a feeling, a state, or something else. It is the emotion that you feel seeing it, or the information you learn from it, that is of value. In fact, because it's easily reproducible and easy to distribute, the value of the artwork transcends the medium in which it exists, making it incompatible with the traditional value framework. So, given all that, how did society address this problem? Did we adapt? the value framework to accommodate this new reality? Nah, of course not. We try to impose limits on it so that it becomes compatible with our old traditional framework. We basically said, hey, you can totally clone any digital media you want and we'll even provide you with the tools to do it easily, but you're totally not allowed to do it, okay? If you do, we'll send you to jail and make you pay fines. And of course, that was a totally reasonable solution that worked perfectly well and this video is completely useless. <laughs> As creators, and more importantly their exploiters, have come to realize that it's really difficult to assign value to something that can be infinitely cloned, they have started to explore new ways of gaining value from digital media. They basically didn't have a choice, because people just didn't 
respected a lot. Even this video is an example of this. You don't have to pay to own it, but you can still view it and experience it, which gives it value. But then what do I as the creator gain from sharing this value? Well, two things actually. First, a sense of purpose. I had felt good to make the video and I had fun doing it and I get satisfaction from you watching it and everyone else learning something, at least from me and hearing me out. But I also get a financial or future financial incentive, not resulting from a direct exchange of wealth from yourself to me, but more from a indirect exchange of your data being harvested by YouTube and then YouTube serving you ads and then those ads paying YouTube money and then YouTube giving me a cut of that revenue. Well, not me directly, I'm not monetized yet, but that is in theory how it works. But it's this financial incentive that drives me as the owner to claim this video as my creation. It's not because I want recognition to serve my ego, it's because I want my fair share of the profits. Well, yes, that's technically true, but I also got inspiration from watching main KBHD's video on the OpenAI topic. So I should credit him, which I am right now, in the hope that you watch his video too, and he'll get some financial incentive from it. But then he probably watched someone else's video and got inspiration from that, and he should credit them. And then he took inspiration from OpenAI's chat GPT and the content it generated, and he should credit, wait, he should, credit a robot? To create this video, I drew inspiration from multiple sources and used the work of multiple people to push the conversation forward and create something new. I am required to credit those authors and pay them royalties. I transformed existing media into new media, added my personal touch, and now it's a new creation. Just like OpenAI does. The way OpenAI works is vastly complicated, but in the simplest of terms, you feed it as much pre-existing data as possible, and when you ask it to create something, it will generate something new by doing combinations and permutations of that data. It may not have actual creativity, but that's a topic for another video. Essentially, it does the same thing a human does when creating new digital art, but much faster and with a degree of precision that surpasses that of most humans in any subject. OpenAI's existence poses a major challenge to our framework of values, Again, the software doesn't credit its sources of inspiration, so creators who operate within the established framework are understandably upset because it completely disregards the value of their work. This is a much bigger issue than it seems at first glance. From a technological standpoint, we could probably attach a long list of credits to every new item generated by OpenAI. People probably just wouldn't care. They wouldn't care because there will be so much new media created at such a fast pace drawing inspiration from so many different sources that it would be information overload and at some point become completely irrelevant. If you cite as your inspiration 50 different sources because that's what the algorithm did, is it really transformative media anymore? This raises questions about the value of people's skills and whether or not the technology, its creators or its users are wrong or evil. While it's true that AI may not be, while it's true that AI may not be as skilled as elite artists, it is better than most people and good enough for most people, which could potentially diminish the value of many artists' skills. This is a significant change that society is just not prepared for, and it raises questions about the impact on industries such as email writing, spell checking, proofreading, and programming aside from the art industry. Our current framework for assigning value and ownership to digital media is no longer effective in the face of technology. Basically what I'm trying to say is, the traditional concept of ownership and the idea that our labor has a specific monetary value has been challenged by technology, and society has yet to find a way to adapt to these changes. In the Star Trek universe, and I know I'm quoting fiction here, money no longer exists. This is not because the people have unanimously decided that money is silly, but it's because they invented a device called the replicator that can generate anything you want on demand, such as food tools, clothes, anything you need. The invention of such a device completely undermines one of the key economic principles, scarcity. When something is scarce, such as labor, artwork, or food, it becomes valuable and tradable. However, once you can easily produce that item at zero cost, its scarcity becomes almost zero. 
making it essentially worthless in trade, although it still has value for consumption. Currently, AI software acts as a replicator for digital assets and basic labor. I can instantly summon whatever media I need at almost zero cost, reducing the scarcity of that element to nothing. Yes, it might not do it perfectly, yet, but it will get there. And right now, it does it well enough. Most of the thumbnails on my videos have become AI-generated artwork because it's cheaper and easier to produce than the classical way. This is a shift that society as a whole is just not yet ready for. Going back to Star Trek, when scarcity ceased to exist and most labor became technically useless in trade, society did not experience an economic meltdown or everyone becoming a useless vegetable. How much did this thing cost? The economics of the future is somewhat different. You see, money doesn't exist in the 24th century. No money? You mean you don't get paid? The acquisition of wealth is no longer the driving force in our lives. We work to better ourselves and the rest of humanity. Humans don't become completely pointless when compensation is removed. We simply readjust our focus on labor towards self-fulfillment rather than financial gain. The only reason we actually work for financial gain is because we need to survive. If survival wasn't part of the equation, nobody would be doing a job that they do not like or do not find fulfilling. Unfortunately, our current framework of value has been in place for so long and it's so ingrained in our society that its obsolescence will likely cause significant growing pains. Think of this new technology as a canary in the coal mine. It is a very sophisticated tool that in the hands of experts can be utilized to do the job of thousands in mere minutes. How will we use it? In the face of these technological advancements, it's important to consider their impact on society. As more tasks are replaced by automation, the scarcity of certain types of labor becomes zero. Are we ready for this shift? Here is an example issue with our framework that is currently happening and it's not due to this new technological revolution, it's been happening for a while. According to the United Nations, 14% of food production is wasted between the point of production, harvest, and retail. That is just transport. An additional 17% of it is wasted post-retail, due to expiration, either in homes or in stores. At the very same time, 800 million people worldwide are at risk of life-threatening hunger. Why can't we just make these two problems I'll tell you why. Because our current system demands a financial incentive. It is a perfect example of the weakness of our current framework. We will not do anything as a society unless it benefits us individually, when it should benefit the whole of us, every single person living in this society. As we continue to develop these new technologies that challenge and disrupt traditional systems, it becomes clear that we are just not ready for these advancements. Our intelligence has far outpaced our ability to adapt and evolve our society. You could see this phenomena as a great filter, a challenge that we must overcome in order to progress and survive. If we do not find a way to navigate these new challenges, the alternative is bleak. Our current economical system and framework demands that we take these advancements, replace the human labor that was previously there, without giving any consideration for the human cost that it will cause. The only important consideration is the financial gain for the entity that replaced that labor with a more efficient way of doing things. As for the reason why our intelligence is so far outpacing our societal evolution, that's actually really easy. You only need a few people to have good ideas in order to push technology further, but you need everyone on board in order to push societal change. And people are very reluctant to change. So hey, you've reached the end of my rant. What's wrong with you? Thank you for watching, and I would just like to take this minute and remind you that these are just the ramblings of one dude on the internet. I'm by no means an authority or an expert on the subject, I basically just pulled it out of the air. This is just the way I see the situation, and I could be very wrong. But that's okay. I blast out these ideas onto the internet in the search of personal fulfillment. Think of it as my way of adapting to this hopefully Star Trek-inspired future. But what do you think? Let me know. Press the like button, or the dislike button, or leave a comment. Whatever way you choose to express your opinions regarding this subject, maybe you'll formulate an idea that will be completely transformative for my point of view. And that'd be great. I'm all for it. 
But until next time, peace.